Hello, today's topic is on multiplying decimals. You need to learn to know how to do that. Uh, we've already probably added them and subtracted them, but uh, today is something a little bit new. So we're going to learn how to multiply them. I'm going to put a big parenthesis out here because I want to put something in there in just a moment. Uh, here's our first problem to look at. 0 0.03 times 0.2. Okay, 3 hundredths times 2 tenths. Now, did you notice that I did something differently here from what I did when we were adding and subtracting? Whenever we were adding and subtracting, we always had to do something that I didn't do this time. What is that? Well, you notice that I did not line up the decimal points. Whenever you are multiplying decimals, you do not need to line up the decimal points. Now, sometimes they coincidentally line up, but it's just a coincidence. But whenever you're multiplying them, you do not need to make an effort to line up the decimal points. Decimal points can just fall where they may. We're going to multiply decimals basically the same way that we multiply whole numbers. But before we work this problem and get its decimal answer, I want to work this very same problem using fractions instead. You see, decimals and fractions are really the same thing as each other. They're just a different way of writing the same thing. So I want to find the answer to this problem using fractions before I even try to work it using decimals. You see, this is three hundredths. This is two tenths. I could multiply the fraction three hundredths times the fraction two tenths, and the answer that I get has got to equal the same answer that we'll have here. Okay, three times two is six. A hundred times ten is a thousand, and so the answer to this problem has to be six thousandths. Now, how would you write six? thousandths. We would, writing it, we would write it by putting a six in thousandths place. The correct answer is point zero zero six. Now notice how crooked those decimal points are from each other. When you multiply decimals, this goes in the parentheses now, you do not line up the decimal points. That's very important you do not line up the decimal points. However, here's what you do. In the problem, you count how many digits are on the right side of the decimal point. Well, there's a decimal point, there's a decimal point, and when I count all the, dec the digits that are on the right side, there are one, two, three of them on the right side, and in the answer, there are also that many, one, two, three of them on the right side of the decimal point. Three digits on the right in the problem, so there must be three digits on the right in the answer. Next example, a little easier, 0.3 times 0.4. Now notice that it was just a coincidence that the decimal points lined up in this problem, but it's going to, it, they're still not going to line up with the decimal point in the answer. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. Now in the problem, there are two digits that are on the right side of the point. So in the answer, I have to have a total of one, two digits, two digits that are on the right side of the point. Okay, next example, 0.17 times 0.2. Two times seven is 14, carry one. Two times one is two plus the one more up here makes three. Now, in the problem count, how many digits are on the right side of the decimal points? One, two, three. So in the answer, I also have to have three digits on the right side of the decimal point. Okay, one, two, three. There have to be three digits on the right side of the decimal point. So what does that missing digit have to be? Well, it has to be a zero. 0.034, 34 thousandths, okay? And let's do one more. Let's do 1.3, change pins, 1.3 times 25. Right. Five times three is 15, carry one, six. Now I wanna scoot over a space and multiply by two. A lot of people like to put a zero here in this place to help them remember 
not to put anything there. Okay, that, that when you multiply 2 times 3 and get 6, that that 6 isn't going to go here. It's got to go in this space. If you like to put a 0 there, by all means, go ahead and do that. If it helps you to put one there, then go ahead and put a 0 in that space. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. And draw a line. I'm going to add this all together. 5, 12, carry 1, 3. Now, there are, there are a total of, wait a second, that number doesn't look like it has a decimal point. But it does have one. It's just invisible. It's always sitting right after. Remember, the decimal point always comes after one's place. So in this whole number, the decimal point goes there. Okay. And so there are a total of only one digit. There's only one digit after the decimal point in the problem, so there must be one digit after the decimal point in the answer, and so the answer is 32.5. Now, how do you figure out where the decimal point goes in the answer? Here's the rule. There must be as many digits on the right side of the point in the answer as there were in the problem. And there you have it, multiplying decimals. Do not, do not line up the decimal points. You just multiply like usual and count. How many digits are on the right side of the point in the problem? There must be that many digits on the right side of the point in the answer.